it really disturbs me, the father-daughter dance. <laughs> The thing that it's not, not it's not so much it's the not it's not so much the the father daughter dance that bothers me. It's the idea that little girls, you know, taught they have to put on a pretty dress to the attention of a male. I think it's that's bad. one way to see it. I know, but it's so, also there are other things that they could do father daughter that don't involve you know, hair and makeup. I just don't think it's a good message to send Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, what you're saying on that. I really do. So I've gotten some requests to talk about Badger sunscreen and they actually have some decent choices for those of you who want cruelty free sunscreens. They're not vegan because they contain beeswax, but I happen to like their uh, clear zinc broad spectrum SPF 35. They call it unscented instead of fragrance free. Uh, it does not have any essential oils or um, uh, fragrance. It has jojoba oil in it, it has, like I said, beeswax, sunflower seed oil. Both jojoba oil and sunflower seed oil have actually been shown to be very helpful oils in moisturizers. Don't just put oil on your face, guys, and expect it to work as a moisturizer, side note. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Oil on the face just works largely as an emollient, but formulated in, in moisturizing vehicles like this with the occlusive beeswax in there, you've got a good moisturizer. Um, so, jojoba oil is a good oil to include in a moisturizer. Sunflower seed oil is a good oil to include in a moisturizer. Very well tolerated in eczema front skin. Um, and then as far as the um, actual sunscreen, this is uncoated zinc oxide. Uh, so it is, uh, you know, biodegradable. It is going to be kosher in Hawaii. Uh, it doesn't have any chemical filters in it that are banned. Uh, so if you are concerned that the chemical filters, as they wash off into the water, they, you know, could potentially block photosynthesis of marine life, uh, this won't do that. But um, sunscreen's not the only thing that has those filters in it. Uh, and by and large, you know, human bodies in the ocean, uh, you know, banning a few sunscreen ingredients in sunscreens isn't really going to solve that dilemma, but uh, if you want to reduce, I suppose, uh, this would be a good choice. And it is water resistant. I, I really like this one. As far as the cast on this, it, they're touting it to be non-whitening. This does have uh, a cast to it, in my experience using it. It's uh, not bad. Uh, it, it, it's, the sunscreen itself is so emollient that it leaves a shininess behind. Uh, but, like, I don't think you're going to want to put this on and then, you know, go to a holiday gathering and rock it. I mean, maybe you would. I would. But let's face it, I don't, like, socialize that much. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, to each his own. But if you have a darker skin type, I, I think that you don't go into this expecting no cast. There is a little cast, and it's very emollient, so it leaves that kind of shine behind. They also have a, um, is this the same one I just talked about? So that's the sport one, and then they also have an active one. And the only difference between the active and the sport is the water resistant time. So the, act, the sport is 80 minutes, and the water resistant is 40 minutes. And really what that means is they, um, to test water resistance, they put the sunscreen on a subject's at, at the required density. They um, test the SPF, they get 35, then they emerge, they submerge it in a water bath for 20 minutes, they take it out, they repeat the SPF testing, it has to hold up, and they do that 20, they do four 20 minute, four 20 minute uh, tests for the 80 minutes, and so that one passes, and this one passes after 40 minutes. But um, I don't know what it is in the differences between the formulations of the two. 
Uh, I guess perhaps because there is more uncoated zinc in this, a little bit more so. Uh, while it's washing off, you still have 35. Maybe it even starts out a little bit higher, but who knows. Um, so yeah, those two are great. I don't recommend, uh, you know, the tangerine and vanilla one for kids. Just just give your kids the non-kids one, the active or, or sport, whichever you choose. The This one has vanilla in it, vanilla, vanilla fruit extract. These are, that's fragrance. Tangerine fragrance, tangerine peel oil. It doesn't matter if it was cold pressed, steamed, what have you. Uh, the, um, the, the fragrance things like geraniol, citronella, those, those are still present and uh, can cause allergic contact dermatitis, can cause phyto phytophotodermatitis. Yes, there are case reports of phytophotodermatitis to inactive fragrance ingredients in sunscreen. So I don't recommend the tangerine and vanilla, although I bet it smells wonderful. Uh, same holds true with the chamomile and calendula. I wouldn't recommend that uh, because of the Roman chamomile flower oil. That's basically fragrance. Uh, but as far as fragrance containing things, uh, you know, if you just wanted to use this as a hand cream, I guess it's not too bad because, you know, they oftentimes will put calendula in a lot of moisturizers. People can react to it and can, can have allergy to it. But, uh, you know, I, I think if your sun, sun exposure isn't too much and you just want an SPF on your hands, this might actually be a good choice if you like the scent of it. Uh, but it is, not, it is not their best one by far. These are all zinc sunscreens, so great broad spectrum UVA, UVB coverage. Uh, do, in my experience with, with swatching all of them and trying out the active and, <laughs> the active and sports, they do leave a bit of a cast. Now, I, um, moving away from the sunscreens, I, uh, or here they have the sunscreen that they're talking about being a combined sunscreen and uh, bug repellent. Check out my insect repellent video. I talk about why co combination sunscreen insect repellent is a terrible idea and you shouldn't do it. Uh, but this uh, is not an effective insect repellent. This will not protect you against um, you know, mosquito-borne illnesses uh, and, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, this has been examined. These essential oils, they only can cause harm to you through irritant and allergic contact dermatitis. You ger geranium oil, uh, that's lo laden with geraniol and that's going to give you, that can give you an allergic contact dermatitis. Um, furthermore, this has olive oil in it. Uh, olive oil, not a bad thing to use in a cleansing oil where you wash it off, but when olive oil is left on the skin as in a moisturizer, it can actually increase transepidermal water loss. So I don't recommend this. Um, and the DEET-free thing, don't fear DEET, you know, fear mosquito-borne illnesses. Uh, DEET protects you from that. Uh, check out my insect repellent video for more DEETs on DEET. Um, likewise, the anti-badger bug spray, I'm obviously not going to recommend that because it's uh, deep free, um, I believe, what is it, it's still like a, a mix of essential oils. Yeah. Alright, and then last but not least, this is Badger Balm for hardworking hands. I don't recommend this either because this is, this is intended to be a moisturizer to repair dry cracked hands, right? So why would you go putting olive oil, olive fruit oil on your hands? Uh, I, I, when I just told you that, leaving it on the skin as a moisturizer actually has been shown to increase transepidermal water loss. Additionally, they put wintergreen leaf oil in this. You know why? So it'll tingle and you think it'll do, it's doing something and it's, it's, it's soothing. And it does smell nice, but that can, that can actually really uh, cause irritant and or allergic contact dermatitis. Wintergreen oil is, is gonna cause some vasodilation. And it's not a good ingredient. Aloe, some people can be sensitive to, but there's a lot of data showing it's also got anti-inflammatory compounds, so that's okay. Um, and then castor, castor seed oil, castor oil, people also develop allergies to that a fair amount. Yeah, don't recommend that, but they're sport and active. Those are good, those are good. So hey guys, happy Vlogmas Day 23. We're here at Whole Foods, so just ran through the Badger sunscreen for you guys. But um, yeah, this morning I put on the uh, Elta MD UV Sport and that Tizo over it. And then you saw me reapply the Olay uh, SPF 30 fragrance free. And good morning. You're looking jazzy. I was just um, admiring your necklace. Yeah, this was a gift um, from you. You were saying it came in that pop sugar yeah. must have that box that like I got you. Like five Christmases ago. Yeah. 
I like it though. It's, it's cute. Fun and you've got your little drummer boy. Yeah. Okay, so we just did oatmeal. Oh, okay. With, and you got um, lots of berries. And this is that version of crab granola, but I think it's the blueberry. It's the blueberry flax. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So that's what I did with my cinnamon coffee. We're at the we're at the quieter Whole Foods. <laughs> the one it's a little that, more crowded today, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I cut arugula and cauliflower, um, black and blueberries, a uh, piece of tofu, like a tablespoon of oatmeal, and I also put uh, zoodles in the bottom. Um, so someone was asking like how much these cost. It all depends on the weight. Uh, so they weigh weigh your food at Whole Foods and from the salad bar, um, and. They charge a flat fee for oatmeal, but if you get non-oatmeal, you, you tell them that and they weigh it. So it's all in what you put in here. The, he the heavier stuff will cost you more. So you have to be selective with what you choose. Go for go for lightweight things. <laughs> and I just dusted it. I just dusted it with cinnamon. Cinnamon makes everything festive. <laughs> work there what's she doing um, I'm being a puzzler <laughs> <laughs> what I thought I would do is cull through and pull out all the edge pieces Ooh. Um, I can't show you <laughs> the picture because it's on here it's here on the side yeah. it's these pretty house uh, yeah. the house oh that's gonna be it nice reminded me of Downton Abbey. That's yeah I couldn't resist it. cool but I'm not getting much assistance from uh, Someone who shall be nameless. Well, this this puzzle thing was your idea. I never willingly signed up to to puzzle. You said the word puzzle. I that's, mentioned it. That's all it took. I mentioned it. I scurried over there and grabbed a puzzle. And <laughs> you, you've kind of been fixated on it. Well, yeah. that's I'm glad. And there's one thing though: when you live in a tea tiny apartment, mm -hmm. a thousand piece puzzle can kind of cramp your style. <laughs> 
<laughs> just saying. I'm trying to make it work, but uh, we may have to uh, have to go to a, an, an Airbnb <laughs> to finish the puzzle. <laughs> Little boy, what are you doing down there? Patrolling? Love me, love me, love me, dance with me. Aw, sweet boy. What a sweetie. Somebody's baking cookies. It smells good in here. Yeah, I just um, am making some sweet potato cookies. This is my recipe, so I will put it down below in the description box, but it's just mashed sweet potatoes and some other things, as you saw, but... Um, they come out, I don't know that you would, they're, they're technically a cookie, I guess they are. They're kind of just like baked, baked sweet potato balls. I think they're really good. Mm -hmm. They take a long time to bake though, because oh, of the, they, the well, potato to, to firm up. The house a little bit. Little boy. Oh, These are surprisingly good. <laughs> well, I'm, I thought sweet potato, it's going to taste like casserole. Yeah. But no, it's good. What good. did you use to sweeten it? Uh, just uh, two tablespoons of um, uh, molasses. And then unsweetened applesauce. To me, that sweetened stuff. What I like is it's so seedy. And nut are there nuts in here too? Or just a seeds? quarter of a cup of, uh, of unsalted raw sunflower seeds. Very good. Tybee, I'm not sure if it's dog friendly. Um, I'm not going to risk I'm, it. No, I don't know I'm that sunflower. Can I have a second one of these? I, I, there's no rules in Vlogmas. There's no rule. There are no, there are no rules. The only, only rules are to attempt to adhere to, to better use of language. Rules are for wimps. <laughs> well, hey guys, what's up? I am back. I went to the gym and, uh, I had a great workout, um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about this COSRX uh, PHA Moisture Renewal Power Cream that I shared with you guys in the iHerb video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, um, I was really happy to be able to partner with them. As you guys know, I really love iHerb. In fact, I am going to probably place an order <laughs> order on their site tonight for for some more stuff. But anyways, I uh, have finished this up. I think I finished it sometime, I don't know, several months ago and just kind of forgot to talk about it. Um, but I have another one, so at some point I'll probably start talking about it again. But I just wanted to let you guys know this um, I is one of the COSRX products that I really like. COSRX, uh, if you're not familiar, is a K-Beauty brand. They have a lot of good products, specifically the Overnight uh, Nourishing Rice Spa Mask, which is a moisturizer, basically. Um, and uh, this, this is very good. This is just a nice light to, to a light, I would call it a light uh, cream, uh, moisturizing cream. It is fragrance free. Um, and the nice thing about this, it's a little pricey in comparison to other moisturizers, but the nice thing about this is it has something called polyhydroxy acids in it. Those include things like uh, gluconolactone. Polyhydroxy acids are um, kind of, they're, they're exfoliant. They, they exfoliate the skin very, 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 very gently. I mean, it's kind of like, if you think of of exfoliating like with an with uh, like a, a glycolic acid peel that you might get in a physician's office or you know salicylic acid that is kind of like like getting down on your hands and knees and and buffing the floor whereas this is kind of like um <laughs> you know a more hands-off cleaning approach where you just <sighs> blow the dust off. That's kind of what polyhydroxy acids do. Um, and so they can kind of help uh, soften the skin just by very lightly dusting the surface. Um, there, it's like a, it's like almost like a Swiffer sweep, sweeper um, or, you know, a feather duster um, of exfoliation on your face. It's incredibly, incredibly gentle. Um, because they are, they're, um, they, um, in addition to doing that, they also really act um, by and large as humectants, kind of like alpha hydroxy acids do, um, depending on their size in particular in most, in most, in most cosmeceutical products, to be honest with the alpha hydroxy acids, by and larger are really functioning more as humectants. 
uh, depending on how the product is formulated. But uh, the same holds true with polyhydroxy acids. They're just a lot more gentle to tolerate. They um, have the potential to be rosacea friendly. I say that, um, you know, conservatively because everyone's rosacea is incredibly different. But polyhydroxy acids have been examined in patients with rosacea and, you know, a few studies, small studies of patients with rosacea and appear to be well tolerated. So if you are someone with, you know, sensitive skin, rosacea prone skin, using a moisturizer with polyhydroxy acids in it, um, it's kind of a nice way to uh, very lightly dust the surface of your skin, kind of improve what you all might refer to as skin texture, um, while simultaneously really functioning well to, to enhance the skin barrier by virtue of that humectant property that that um that is that is working in the moisturizer so this is a really good choice to dip your toe into the pha polyhydroxy acid waters believe it or not the uh exuviance sheer daily protector sunscreen that i've been wearing this is a tinted sunscreen that i have been wearing i really like this by the way um it uh this is very rosacea friendly as well this um also has um polyhydroxy acids in it. So, um, you know, I've kind of, I've kind of at, not currently, I'm not currently using this. I'm just using CeraVe cream on my face at night, um, as it should my skincare routine. But, uh, you know, doing this one at night and this one, you know, as your tinted moisture, just tinted sunscreen during the day, that's really a nice way to kind of have some, some ongoing, um, dusting, if you will. And that feather dusting isn't the kind of exfoliation that's like, peeling uh, to the extent that, you know, you have to be really worried that you're overdoing it, you know, when you go out in the sun in particular, um, like you would, like you, like you would with, you know, some of the harsher alpha hydroxy acid products out there. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about this because I, you know, I put it on for you guys in that video. I realized I haven't really ever talked about it. I talked about polyhydroxy acids in my alpha hydroxy acid video. Um, so they're worth coming back to. Um, and Neostrata and Exuviants, I believe, have some um, pretty nice, uh, albeit incredibly expensive, polyhydroxy acid moisturizers and products that are really nice and really good. They're, many of them are fragrance-free. Uh, but this one is a little bit more affordable, and I have found it to be a good good choice. I've kind of been on the hunt for polyhydroxy acid affordable um, moisturizers, and I think this is a good choice. Um, you know, it's it's worth giving a shot. You know, uh, I it's pretty by and large it's kind of expensive because it's just this tiny little jar, but uh, you know for whatever it's worth on iHerb, you know, it's pretty easy to, it's pretty easy to just throw things in your cart and before you know it, you're like, oh, look at this, I've got a Korean 80 step skincare routine here. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that. So um, I'll, I'll come back to it at, at some point and, and uh, revisit the topic episodically and periodically and, and onward and upward. But yeah, little PHA update. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the vlog today and this weekend, and I hope you guys are enjoying Vlogmas. I'm kind of sad that it's almost over, but you know my video content, um, you know, is not going to stop. So <laughs> don't worry, we'll still be together on the regular, even though, even though I'm, I put you guys on the vlogging camera. Can you see I have my stocking in the back when I'm on my when I'm on my bigger camera? It, you know, it focuses more on my my. The scary face rather than rather than the background so <laughs> maybe you can appreciate that I have a little festive charm in here look at me before you know it I'll I'll have a uh, holiday themed bedspread no I'm just kidding that I will never do <laughs> nothing wrong with doing that I just couldn't I could not I could not tolerate storing holiday linens all year round it would drive me crazy but Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.